we welcome maharaj for the gbc spt channel hari krishna uh, i would like to give a brief introduction about uh, maharaj so uh, his holiness in chandramouli swami maharaj is a disciple of his iskon founder acharya his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupad and an initiating spiritual master within the iskon movement maharaj was born in new, new jersey in usa in 1947 and he came in contact with iskon in denver at the age of 24 in 1973 maharaj began practicing krishna consciousness in new york city after a short after short and shortly thereafter began serving in at the new rindavan farm community in west virginia that same year maharaj received initiation from his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupad in 1986 maharaj accepted the sanyas order and began preaching in in chinchin chinchinati and columbus ohio in the early 1980s maharaj became involved with the iskon prison ministry in the usa and began visiting prisons prisoners and holding programs in jails along with regularly writing letters to inmates and sending them shrila prabhupad's books uh, and maharaj is now the leader of the iskon uh, the prison ministry and has worked tirelessly to document the spiritual progressions of the worldwide inmate community his dedication to the welfare growth and sustainable rehabilitation of these prisoners has culminated in the book holy jail a th- very touching compilation of the activities of the iskon prison ministry so in uh, in over 30 years of operation the lives of hundreds of inmates have been changed to practice the krishna consciousness and support uh, support received by many devotees at present maharaj offers spiritual guidance around europe usa and india we are highly inspired by maharaj association especially for his dancing during kirtan in mayapur we had that good as good uh, blessings so today maharaj is going to speak about the killing of dhenuka sorry the killing of aghasur from shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto 12th chapter so hare krishna maharaj ಪಂಚಕೌಪಿಂಧುಯ ಜೈ ಸಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಸಿ ಗೋರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ವಿನ್ನ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಅಪಿನಮಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಹೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಡೆಂಟಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ so uh today we will narrate or attempt to narrate of one of the more interesting pastimes which leads to another series of pastimes this particular pastime is called the killing of the demon agasura hmm. um krishna in vrindavan um has many of his wonderful pastimes centered around his cowherd friends and as is described there are so many cowherd boys as krishna is unlimited his friends are also of the same quality they are also unlimited so one particular day krishna decided to take his breakfast as a picnic with many of his cowherd friends so the word went out to all the boys and they all gathered and found krishna in the forest and came together and coming together they brought along their different groups of calves and the boys and the calves were all decorated very nicely and they all came to see krishna krishna was so happy to see his friends and they were about to begin a picnic but before they started to eat they decided to play so that the boys were playing various kinds of games that's described in the shrimad bhagavatams different games that the boys play many of us as children here in the world play these similar games 
the boys would like to sport, play jokes, and uh, play pranks upon each other. And Krishna was the center of everything. He would be the person who would be uh, the focus of everything they did. And uh, everything centered around glorifying Krishna. Sometimes Krishna would run to a far off place and the boys would think, oh, there goes Krishna. I want to touch him. I'm going to touch him first. No, I'll touch him first. So they would run and compete to see who could get to Krishna first. And this way they would play so many wonderful games and feel great happiness and joy. They would also play games such as going near a well and they would call ill names down to the well and the wells would echo back in the ill names and then they would criticize the echo for speaking such ill names and then they would laugh and run away. They would jump into trees and sometimes scare the monkeys in the trees or make fun faces at the monkeys and jump around like monkeys. In this way, they would play different games. One of the games that was very popular that they would play is that each of the boys would have their own individual lunch pails with them given by their mothers. And sometimes one boy would go to another boy and when the boy wasn't looking, he would steal his lunch pail quickly away and then he would throw it to another boy. And this other boy whose lunch pail was stolen, he would try to get it back and he would run back and forth. And then they would laugh. But when the boy became upset and he'd start crying, where's my lunch pail? They would all laugh and then return his lunch pail to him. They would play leapfrog, jumping this way and that way. And this way, and this was Vrindavan. Simply a joyful expression of various games with Krishna and his friends, all centered around giving pleasure to Krishna. This was going on for some time. And then one particular personality, who his name is Aga, he was sent along with many other demons prior to his being sent to come into Vrindavan, disturb the residents of Vrindavan. And Kamsa knew that Krishna, as it was prophesied, would be the cause of his demise. So being fearful of that, he had controlled all many powerful demons and then he subjected them or subjugated them that they must follow his instructions and kill Krishna. Of course, that was their nature. And so they dutifully followed Kamsa's orders. Now, Aga, when he appeared on the scene, he immediately started to think. Hmm. He saw the cowherd boys. He saw Krishna there. He was somewhat invisible. And he was thinking, hmm. This boy, Krishna, he's killed my brother, Bakasur, and my sister, uh, um, uh, Putana Witch. Both were her brother and sister. And now I will avenge the death of my brother and sister. And I will kill him and the cowherd boys, and I will offer them as the last rites to the departed ancestors of my brother and sister. So thinking this way, he made his plot. He expanded himself into a very unusual personality, a very long, gigantic serpent, which was as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was so long that he covered eight miles in length. And his jaw, and his body was huge. And he decided to attract the cowherd boys into his mouth by appearing to be a playful spot that they could enjoy. So as the boys were playing different games and Krishna was also there, this demon started to make his plot. And he laid down on the path and he opened his mouth really wide as described at the very top of his mouth was reddish like the sun reflects off a cloud and the bottom of his lip was also reddish but of the shadow of the top lip in a reflective state 
and his mouth was so huge, like two caverns that were in her, and his teeth were immense, like gigantic mountains. Now the boys were playing, and some of the boys noticed, oh, look, what is that? Oh, it's a serpent. No, it can't be. This is Vrindavan. Well, maybe it is. Well, maybe it's just a statue. Other boys said, no, no, it's not a statue. It's a real serpent. He's come to kill us. Some boys ran away in fear. Others thought, hmm. Well, you know, many times Krishna has saved us from so many dangers, and it looks like a nice place to play. So let's go. So some, some of the cowherd boys, many of them actually, got together and decided to enter into the mouth of this big hideous serpent. And they were thinking, Krishna will save us. And somehow it mentions, it's interesting how it's described here that Krishna became diverted by his own internal potency. His internal potency appeared in such a way as to distract his attention from what was happening so the boys could enter into the mouth. When Krishna saw that, it appears that he became bewildered. But this was the feature of his internal potency acting in such a way as to give Krishna an appearance of being an ordinary person. But it, it explains that this apparent bewilderment by Krishna was also a message. And what is that message? The message is that the material energy by nature is, has this bewildering potency that it can act so strongly that even I, the Supreme Lord, can be, become bewildered. Of course, he cannot. But that is, the, that is the message that is given in this particular incident where Krishna appears to become bewildered. But then that was, it says, that happened momentarily. And Krishna understood, oh, the boys have entered into the mouth. Now the demon, he's waiting for Krishna. He doesn't want to, to kill the cowherd boys. He wants to kill Krishna and the cowherd boys together. So he knows Krishna will come to save them. So he remains there very patiently. And then Krishna decides, well, it's time. So then he runs into the mouth, and as soon as he ran into the mouth, Agasura closed his mouth. And it's mentioned, actually, when he did that, actually all the Cowper boys actually died. But Krishna, as soon as he closed his mouth, Krishna expanded himself into himself in such a way that there was so much pressure into the mouth of the demon that the demon could not keep his life air and it burst out through the top of his head and stayed hovering in the sky. Now it's interesting this particular demon was killed in that way simply by Krishna expanding himself into the mouth of the demon and causing him to choke. His, his soul or his life air went into the air and it stayed there. And it stayed there by Krishna's arrangement. When it was there, it, it, it's, it's amazing because all the demigods, they were watching this whole thing. They knew that Agasura was about trying to kill Krishna. They were also praying, please, Krishna, kill this hideous demon. Although we drink somaras and although we are, we are practically immortal, still we are very fearful of this demon. And he's always causing disturbance. So when his soul, life air, went into the air and hovered above his body, the demigod saw it. And there was a great festival that the demigod started to sing and dance and the apsaras were dancing and the chim the gandharvas were singing and many of the other demigods were playing instruments and made such a huge festival of sound that Lord Brahma came out of his planet in, in Satya Loka just to see what was happening. At that point, 
Krishna appeared outside of the demon's mouth and as soon as that happened, the soul of this demon, and it was noticeable for the demigods, they all saw it, immediately merge into the body of Krishna. This is interesting. This particular demon got a, some special mercy that other demons didn't get. He, not most of the demons attain surupya mukti when they merge into the effulgence of the Lord or the bodily, uh, the bodily effulgence of the Lord or the effulgence of the Lord's body, either one, or into the body of the Lord. But this particular demon. He had a special, he got some special mercy. When Krishna was in his mouth, he thought of Krishna with devotion for just a fraction of a moment. That fraction of a moment, thinking of uh, Krishna in a devotional way, gave him eligibility that after he was killed, he merged into the body of the Lord and he got surupya mukti which is having the same transcendental bodily form as the Lord, which is really, really given to demons, very rare. Somehow or other, by Krishna's grace, or whatever little good fortune he had, he thought of Krishna within devotion. This is a very interesting point, because even people who in the material world somehow or other come in contact with Krishna at the time of death and somehow appreciate Krishna or chant his name, and then they're pretty much guaranteed in their next life to take a human birth in a family of devotees at the minimum, or they may also attain association with Krishna in the material world in some planet where Krishna is residing. So this particular demon... He got special, special mercy. Now, after that, it says that now that Krishna, after he he uh, he uh, liberated the demon, he glanced over the bodies of the, the cowherd boys who appear to have lost their life due to being inside of the horrible body of Agasur. It says that inside of his body, there was such a wretched smell coming from his intestines that the smell alone would kill anything in its vicinity. Now the boys actually, as is described, actually appears to have lost their life, but Krishna glanced over them and brought them back to life. And they didn't even realize or even remembered that they had died. All they remember was that they were in the mouth of the demon and now they were with Krishna again. And this was Krishna's special mercy. So many of these demons would come daily to harass Krishna or to harass the cowherd boys, to harass the residents of Vrindavan, to kill Krishna. It says that every day Krishna was killing, on the average, two demons. <laughs> the demons that we hear about in the Srimad Bhagavatam are some of the more prominent ones that are given in these different leelas. But Yoga Maya was arranging for demons to come at least twice every day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And they would come on schedule too. It's interesting how it's explained that Krishna would, Krishna loves to play. And when he's with his cowherd boy, that's all friends, that's all he does. He plays and he, he's enjoying himself immensely. They share lunch, they tell jokes, and Krishna is just so happy enjoying with his friends. And he forgets about eating. And his mother is always concerned. He's never coming home to eat. Uh, he sends, she sends some, sometimes she sends Balaram, she sends Rohini, or sometimes other persons to call Krishna when Krishna doesn't come. And so in order for Krishna to eat, Dima, this uh, yoga maya sends these demons at this particular time, just at the end of Krishna's pastimes with his friends, when he plays enough. So then he kills the demon and he gets hungry. <laughs> Krishna gets hungry. He gets hungry for transcendental foodstuffs supplied by his loving devotees. 
So this particular pastime is quite unique. And it's described, and there's a lot of discussion centered around the, the destination of this particular demon, Agasur. He was very fortunate. Now, another part of this pastime as described in this particular uh, chapter is that uh, this pastime of Krishna killing the demon was revealed only one year later after it happened. Only one year later after it happened. And everyone thought that at the time it was revealed is when the time it just happened. So in between then, we'll find, you'll see, there's another pastime that's related to that. Lord Brahma, he gets involved and he sees what's happening and then he tries to understand from his position as being the Lord of the universe, who is this Krishna and how is he killing these big demons? So that leads into the next pastimes of stealing the cowherd calves and boys by Lord Brahma. So that connects with the idea that nobody knew about the killing of Agasur until one year later when it was revealed during the pastime of Lord Brahma killing, uh, stealing the cows and cowherd boys. Well, that was interesting. And it's also interesting that the skin of this demon, Agasura, stayed in the place where he was killed after he died. And it was used as a playground for the cowherd boys. They used the cowherd boys would come and play different games on it after some time. So um, Krishna and Vrindavan, Killing demons, pranitranayam, sadunam, vinasanaya, chaduskritam, dharma, samstapanartayam, sambhavami, yuge, yuge. There's two businesses that Krishna has when he comes to the material world to enjoy transcendental pastimes with his intimate associates in Sri Vrindavan Dham in so many wonderful ways with his friends, with his parents, with his lovers, with people in general. And and eliminating those elements that are causing disturbance to others, and that is the demons, and reenacting, re erecting uh, transcendental principles that govern human society. So when Krishna comes, and this killing of a demon is one of his uh, one of his side pastimes. <laughs> His main pastime is to uh, associate with and enjoy transcendental pleasure with his devotees. Krishna is Rasavaisa. He is the reservoir of all transcendental happiness, all transcendental knowledge. He shares that knowledge. He shares that happiness in his activities in devotional service. Hmm. Now, this is a beautiful pastime. Uh, there are many, many details that uh, may have been eliminated to get to the pretty much essence of the pastimes. So I'll stop here and uh, let's see if there's any comments or questions related to Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. You're right, on mute. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Maharaj, there is one question. Um, like, uh, uh, it is uh, it has been heard that like uh, different demons in Rindavan, they represent different anarthas. So, can uh -huh. you tell us about this? Devotees asking. Yeah, um, there is a whole listing of some of the prominent demons in Vrindavan, and what they represent as, as some of the bad qualities of the living entities in the material world. And these things are called anarthas or uh, blockages on the path of spiritual life. And they're represented by particular demons. Um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and some of the other acharyas, Bhakti Vinodhakar specifically, describes these in detail, especially in one book called Shikshamrita, Shikshamrita Chaitanya Shikshamrita, 
which he describes some of the demons in the Anarthas. It's interesting you mentioned this because on Saturday, coming up in two days, I'm giving a three-part series on that topic, Demons of Vrindavan, with the School of Bhakti in, uh, in the United Kingdom, starting on uh, this Saturday, the following Saturday, and the following Saturday, three sessions. So we'll explore some of these different demons and what the, the different anarthas they represent. Um, Agasura represents viciousness, hatred uh, towards other living entities. Uh, that's his particular, uh, uh, you might say, code of activity. He is a snake. A snake is a, a particular type of living entity that unnecessarily causes harm to others without even being provoked. Uh, so that's uh, Agasura. He's a snake. He's vicious. Uh, and uh, yeah, there are many, many, many demons, just like Putana, rich witch. She represents the false guru, and that's her particular, uh, the guru who comes in the form of the materialistic uh, lexiconiver who simply defines guruship based on, on uh, some kind of material knowledge. Uh, that's the, uh, that's Putana witch, and then we have um, uh, Vatsasura, uh, that's also a particular anartha that describes uh, the nature of children and how uh, children act in different ways, uh, expressing their childlike nature, and they become sometimes naughty and sometimes vicious like that. It's described in very much in details. So um, there's a nice compilation. There's a book. It's called Demons in Vrindavan. It's actually not a book more like like a uh, a series of pages put together describing these things it's all based on Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's so an arthas means that which blocks the path of spiritual life um, artha means wanted unartha means unwanted that which is unwanted which is inauspicious which is against the path of path of bhakti so we know demons, they cause disturbance to devotees and therefore they, they, they harass the devotees on the path of devotional service. They become blockages. And the different demons that Krishna killed, many of them, uh, represent various types. Just like Kaliya Serpent represents envy. Uh, he represents the characteristic of enviousness. And so you can go down the list and there's a whole series of these anarthas. So for a devotee, a devotee has to be become somewhat aware of whatever anarthas they may be carrying. And then two things. One, they have to very carefully pray to Krishna to help remove those anarthas and take full shelter of the process of devotional service especially purifying their hearts through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, like that, and very carefully avoiding those situations by which these anarthas can arise. See, these are ways how we, uh, we observe and uh, overcome these anarthas. And it's, it's described in the process of devotional service by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that there are 16 anarthas and there are uh, four categories of four. And when one is practicing devotional service, as, as described by Srila Rupa Goswami, one goes from one stage to another. Adao Strata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivritti is the stage after initiation when one gets the mercy of the spiritual master and the intelligence by which to overcome these anarthas. When one successfully rids themselves of th three quarters of the anarthas that they may be carrying, they move to the next stage, which is nishta, that means firm faith and steadiness in devotional service. 
So yeah, these are things, these are the blockages represented by various demons. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is one, there is one question from Anjali Singh. Why do demon, demons have different destination once killed? <laughs> Why do demons have destiny? Most of them have similar destinations. They get Sayuja Mukti, and that's actually stated in that way. This particular demon, Agasura, was slightly different. He got some special mercy. Somehow he remembered Krishna in devotion for a fraction of a moment while Krishna was in his mouth. And because of that, he attained Sarupya Mukti. But generally, demon. I mean, he. I mean, he. Yeah, he got sarupya mukti. Yeah, generally, demons get sahuja mukti. They merge into the body of the Lord, or merging into the bodily effulgence of the Lord. Okay. It's rare they get anything else besides that. I mean, Putin also got a very high elevation. She says that she got liberation on the same level as Krishna's mother because she acted as the mother of Krishna to uh, offer her breast milk to Krishna. So Krishna took that into account. Although he killed her, freed her from her, her, her bad qualities, but he was so merciful that he elevated her to the stage of mother. So there's a few demons, such as Agasura and his sister Putana, uh, who got very special forms of liberation. But, Mo, but Prabhupada says demons use it, you de, demons get so so Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is one question. Uh, how was it possible for Agasura to come in contact with Krishna? Who who was he in, in his previous life? There is one question. Right? Yeah, that's described in one particular periodical. I'd have to do a little research. But he was, he was a person who was cursed to take birth as a, as a snake because of his envious nature. I think he was a, he was a sadhu. Or another, yeah, he was also a sadhu in his past life. And he was envious of this other sadhu. And his envy was so strong that, um, that he, was, he uh, was cursed. Well, that might maybe actually, I'm, I'm, I think that refers to, that refers to Kaliya. Agasura, it's also mentioned. Mm, I don't have my material right now that shows which demons carry which Arnarthas and what who they were in their past life. Um, I'd have to do some research on that. But um, yeah, um, Agasura was cursed to take birth as 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 this demon because of his uh, viciousness, his cruelty. That was his outstanding in Arthur. Hare Krishna Maharaj. There is one more question, Maharaj. How is that the demigods, although they have consumed nectar, still they have fear of death? <laughs> well, let me see here. I have the book right in front of me. It's actually mentioned in the in the thing, and I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll read the actual verse. It says here, it says, "My dear King Parikshit, thereafter there appeared a great demon named Agasura, whose death was awaited even by the demigods. The demigods drank nectar every day, but still they feared this demon." and awaited his de death. This demon could not tolerate the transcendental pleasure being enjoyed by the cowherd boys. Let's see. Prabhupada doesn't mention the demigods in this particular pastime. 
But in the translation, it says that they drank nectar every day, but still they feared this demon and awaited his death. That's how it's, that's how it's mentioned here. So uh, you might say that the demigod's position is not so stable and that the demons are always harassing or causing trouble to the demigods. So this particular demon was quite, quite powerful. And Maharaj, there is one question. Uh, the demons, after they are killed, they get uh, uh, liberation. And even the impersonal, impersonalists, they also get liberation. Is, are both the same? There is one question. Yes, they're pretty much the same. It says that in one verse that the demons, the impersonalists, the demons get the same level of liberation on the same level as the impersonalists. Yeah, Suhuja Mukti. But then there's two types of Suhuja Mukti merging into the bodily effulgence of the Lord and merging into the body of the Lord. Merging into the body of the Lord is a little bit more elevated in that liberation. Whereas both merging into the bodily effulgence of the Lord is more common amongst the demons. So between these two destinations within the category of Suhuja Mukti, yes, yes, the impersonalists also get the same destination if they perfect their process of, of impersonalism accordingly. If they don't perfect it, they remain in the material world to struggle. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Maharaj. You uh, one, very wonderfully explained the narrations of Lord Krishna's boyhood pastimes in forest of in the forest with his cowherd friends, and also uh, one very interesting point you mentioned. Although the demigod they drink nectar, still they are afraid of Agasura and they were praying to the Lord that this Agasura should be killed. And also uh, you mentioned uh, how Agasura momentarily remembered the Lord and because of that he was he became eligible to get liberated. So and also he, got, you mentioned... he, got, he got the special liberation, he got Sarupya Mukti, he got the same bodily effulgence and, and the same bodily features as the Lord. That was a rare, rare achievement for the for a demon. And also you mentioned, Maharaj, killing the demons is one of the side pastimes of the Lord. But to give association to his devotees is the main part of the Lord's pastimes. That point you mentioned. Yeah, that's Krishna's preference. Yes, Maharaj. And also you mentioned, Maharaj, how Agasur represents a viciousness. So uh, we should try to pray to the Lord by taking shelter of this holy name to be free from anarthas, this point you mentioned. Yeah. You know, the holy name is the, as Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, it's the means for destroying all the anarthas. <laughs> the power of Krishna's holy name is complete. <laughs> yes, Lord. Even today, whatever we may be experiencing some difficulties or some fear due to the present environment but if we take shelter of krishna's holy name then fear fear personified runs away okay uh, maharaj anything you'd like to say in concluding words about this pastime maharaj yeah this is the this is the happiness and this is the essence of bhakti to hear and chant the glories of the lord especially in sri vrindavan dham krishna displays his pastimes for his own transcendental pleasure but for the benefit of the entire population of the universe so that they can also benefit by hearing about and glorifying his transcendental pastimes Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. And that devotees find great happiness and joy in hearing and chanting the glories in the Lord in the association of other devotees. Especially Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan and especially during this particular time, the month of Sri Damodar, which gives greater, greater spiritual merit to these activities.
thank you very much maharaj for your valuable association we look forward to have your association more and more in future maharaj. thank you maharaj. thank you anath shesh prabhu it's a pleasure to be with you thank you thank you maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, we request all of you to stay in touch with the uh, uh, GVCSPT channel. So we'll uh, to receive updates, you can sign up with our website. So and also every day we have different events. So you will get the event updates through uh, uh, different networks. Hare Krishna. Sri Prabhupada ki jai.